Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out the Mega City demo. Now this was first released at Unite LA last year, and this is to demonstrate DOTS, or the Data Oriented Technology Stack, basically the new C Sharp Burst Compiler, Entity Component System, and all of that stuff. And it is a very impressive demo, and what they've done is they've released all of the assets and files um, so that you can try this yourself. What you're seeing is the actual demo running. Um, under like the pre-controlled mode. Now it struggled on the highest settings on my computer. So you're actually seeing it running at a 1.5 times playback to make it look better. But it is an impressive full-blown demo. And this was created by like two artists in a couple of months time. So it does illustrate what you can do with Unity, the modern 2019 version of Unity and their new ECS system. And it also shows you how you can break down using nested prefabs to structure such a massive game like this. Now I've gone ahead and downloaded it. It's a 7.5 gig download. And what we're going to do in a minute is actually jump in and take a look at how this level was put together, uh, what is in the demo, uh, how you can navigate it and get in there and really take advantage of it. But it, it does show where Unity is going and where it's going is a very impressive place. So let's jump in. Okay, so here we are with the demo open. Mega City in all of its glory. What I did is I go into the scenes folder and opened up the Mega City scene. Now at first glance, this looks scary as hell because this thing is absolutely massive. Now, let's take a look around. So let's just fly up here. Now what you'll notice is your computer may chug at times. Mine definitely does off and on. And that's because I have a 16 gig system. And I think a lot of you, especially if you're working in laptops, have a 16 gig system too. Too. And if it starts getting into the 12, 14 gigabytes of memory used kind of area, it can crawl. But for the most part, it performs quite well. You can see here by going inside of one of these buildings exactly how they're composed. And once again, this looks terrifying, but don't worry, we'll break down exactly what's going on here. Uh, but really, it's not that bad. It, it's, it's a fair bit of work, of course. Uh, but if you really look closely at the city itself, and let's go down and look at some of this garbage because that plays a big part in the city. This, um, there's a lot of repetition going on here. So here we'll look at um, the way that things are composed. So you've got the player uh, lighting and so on going forward. Uh, but the parts that are kind of key, so here's the player's camera, the script controlling it. But what you probably find most interesting is all of these scenes. And what they've done here, so let me just frame one of these. If, um, oops, I double clicked it. Hey. Okay, didn't do anything, good. What it is, is they've basically broken down this scene here is a container for all these other scenes. So if we open up, we'll go into the scenes folder, we'll break one down, so Mega Cities, and you'll see ECS demo, this for example is section 18, some here, here somewhere. So let's go ahead and open that guy up, and you'll see this guy in turn represents a chunk of the scene. So like, for example, one of these buildings, we're loading it up right now, so there, it's broken down. And it's just kind of a little sub-level of more stuff. And we're moving quickly towards it. But it is just one of the chunks of the city is in a scene. So the, the main scene is a collection of scenes. And this itself is actually just a collection again. So we'll go inside, and that kind of illustrates it the best. It's a bunch of different objects that have been just kind of placed together. So I can grab one of these things like that, and you'll see it's just... A kit, and this is where that whole nesting of prefabs things comes in really, really powerful. You look here, so you've got this one piece in here, and it's built up of air conditioning units and prefabs and windows and satellite dishes. So what they've done is just basically built um, chunks out of prefabs, out of prefabs, out of prefabs. So we come down here, we'll look at the prefab section, and you'll see it's just a, it's like a gigantic modeling kit bash session. So we we'll go into prefabs, and we will see. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I missed. Prefabs. All right, so we've got things like scene, inside. No, oh, no, I don't actually want scene. I want environment. So here inside prefab, we got environment. And there's, for example, your air conditioning unit. Is There's pre-built ones. And you can just take these air conditioning units and they're just dropped into sections that are dropped into sections. And then that is saved as a scene. You bring them all together and you've got a building as a result. So for every one of these prefabs, obviously, you have all the resources that go with it. So for example, if we go to models, environment, there are your various different air conditioning units. Like so, and then here they are textured. And then speaking of textures, you go into materials, you've got environments, and there's your air conditioning unit again. And there's the materials controlling that um, particular model and of course that material requires a texture you come down here into textures 
and you've got environment, air conditioning unit, and there's the air conditioning unit texture. So it's kind of like, almost imagine flipping it on its reverse. So what you do is you model a single air conditioning unit, you save it as a prefab, and then you model a wall and a window and so on. And then you just start building and you'd make a, a house out of it or a, a apartment unit. And then you save that as a prefab, and then you create a building scene out of it. And you create it using all of the different prefabs or Lego bricks that you've created. And then you create a mega city scene where you bring in all your individual building scenes and that's what you've got. Now, another thing to notice here that I didn't really show that much is we do have multiple different LODs available. So as you kind of get closer to the buildings, it's swapping in the higher resolution or higher detailed version. So that's how they handled LODs. Now there's actually, if you go to their site, which we'll go to in a second, they have um, details on how all of this was put together. So you can definitely learn the process behind it, but really it's a fairly straightforward process. There's also some other interesting stuff here. Um, we have their shaders. So for example, let's see the trash that's all around the scene. We can open this guy up. It will open up, it is a shader shader graph shader so you can see a very complex shader graph to create the trash around the world here so if you want to see how shader graphs work that's what they've done here so you can see it and now weirdly enough i don't get a preview i don't know why that is uh, but you can see shader graph in action there another thing here is this is using the hdrp uh, so if you go into the settings area over here you will find they have three different um, render pipelines configured. So this is the HD render pipeline asset, the standard one. We have another one here for consoles, which is gonna take a second to load. <sighs> See, da -da -da. like I said, it, it takes a bit to load. But here are the configurations and settings for the console version. And then finally, we have another render pipeline set up for um, the, the mid-tier or mid-range machines as well. So you can see how to render and configure multiple different uh, qualities of um, renderer. We also have some timeline stuff here for controlling the fly, um, the fly through of the world. So for example, here we've got a bunch of different control points controlling the splines around the world, which I accidentally just moved. And then here you can actually see the timeline. Oh, that's not actually it. It is in here somewhere. There is a timeline controlling the uh, uh, character flying through the scene. It might be under animations. Timeline, yeah, here it is. So here is the ECS timeline in, in place for that when we first watched the demo, how I was flying through the city, that is the bit that controlled it. So in the end, it's, it's, it looks really, really daunting and terrifying, but it's not too bad actually. And then the other area you're probably gonna wanna jump in and look at is the uh, script section. So we've got some interesting scripts here. For example, coming to gameplay, we can see the controller that controls the car flying around the scene, the player vehicle controls over here. Standard, pretty straightforward code for the most part though. Uh, we've got code controlling the traffic, the other cars in the scenes. Uh, we got the main menu when you first fire up, including uh, states for it there. Um, so it's one of those things where it's really the only kind of major downside to it is it's a bit of a resource pit. So you want to make sure that you have a decent machine. The first time I ran this on my machine, for some reason, it ran so much worse. So there must be a bit of a caching process going on because now I find it um, that I can actually navigate around the mega city scene and it isn't a uh, complete slideshow. But the first time I, I actually opened it up, it was using 14, 15 gigabytes of RAM and my system was coming to a crawl. Now it seems to be, you know, in the seven or eight gigabytes range and it's working just fine. Now, another thing to keep in mind is you're gonna want an okay GPU. What you saw here was a 1080. When I ran it on my 1050, it, it wasn't even worth loading up. So if you don't have at least, I'd say about a 1070 or 1080 as your GPU or say a 2070, maybe even a 2060, uh, it, it's probably not even worth loading up to be honest so here is the website if you want more information or if you want to go get it for yourself during gdc it was on this like temporary download link that was really really slow thankfully now they are hosting it themselves so it's available at unity.com forward slash mega city i'll drop that link down below um it, they were first announced it at the unite la keynote so you can see that there and then they kind of went on do a bit a little bit of the details on it but the cool thing here is they've actually got a number of videos about how they actually built it so if you want to get a little bit more detail about how all the pieces went together uh there are videos there but what you are probably most interested in is this download link right here now keep in mind this is a 7.5 gigabyte download so it, it could still take a little bit of time and then once extracted and actually um into a folder, it takes about 25 gigabytes of space. So you know, once you've loaded it and it's done all of the settings, etc., and to build it, 
it's another about five gigabytes in size. Now, apparently this will run on mobile. I didn't bother doing a mobile build, but if you're into it, uh, you can definitely check that out and see how this actually performs on your phone. I didn't try that myself, but I gotta say this is a very cool, uh, illustration of just what Unity is capable of in terms of scale uh, and performance. If you're looking at how the, the new pieces all fit together and ECS and Burst Compiler and all that stuff, it's not probably the ideal place to learn from because it's just so big, but it does show you how you could build and construct a really large single map world game uh, in a relatively short period of time. Again, this was two or three artists um, that worked on this and that was it in a couple of months time so it does show uh, unity is coming quite a ways now by the way you can also use later versions I found no problem going past so you don't have to use this version specifically they make it look like you do but if you have a later version than this you should be just fine all right so that's a little look behind the scenes at the mega city download um, it, it's it's definitely a, an impressive file, but again, you need a lot of disk space. You're going to need a decent computer. And if you've only got, uh, if you've got less than 16 gigs of RAM or less than a 1070, don't bother. Uh, but if you have all those things, it is definitely worth checking out. Just let it load, let it run, and then you'll find over time the performance does get seemingly a little bit better. What do you think? Are you impressed by this? Are you impressed by the way that Unity's going or nah? All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.